Coming up on this week's news, a building firm is fined over half a million pounds after an electrical contractor falls from a ladder and is impaled on metal piping. A safety warning goes out after live twin and earth cables are found dumped in a wheelie bin. And we meet the former prisoner turned card-carrying electrician. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly, whether you're listening in the van, on site or down at the wholesale counter. I'm Joe Robinson and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. And as always, if you think you've spotted the two words that I've been challenged to slip into this week's show, comment with them below for the chance to win a prize. A Sheffield building firm has been fined £550,000 after an electrician fell from a stepladder and was impaled on metal piping. The company was also ordered to pay the dead man's family £200,000 in compensation. Dumbarton Court outside Glasgow found Lynbrook Services Limited of Netherlane Sheffield guilty of breaches of both health and safety and working at height regulations. The court heard that electrician Matthew Mason was fatally injured while installing a PA system at Beersden train station in June 2018. The 20-year-old was trying to free speaker cabling that had become stuck when he fell backwards from a stepladder onto a section of metal piping that was being used as a handle for a cable drum. The piping pierced his side, causing internal injuries, and he was pronounced dead at the scene. The prosecutor said that the company had failed to assess the risks involved with pulling cables through a conduit at height. It simply didn't make a plan for safe working. This was despite the fact that they had been informed of the problems met by a subcontractor in an earlier attempt. Stepladders were unsuitable for the work and there were insufficient measures to prevent a fall from height. They also failed to adequately identify the risks involved with the use of improvised cable dispensing methods. Prosecutor Debbie Carroll said that Mason lost his life in circumstances which were foreseeable and avoidable. She said the industry needs to adequately address the risks associated with the use of stepladders. Again, that is just such a tragic story. We at EFIX send our deepest condolences to the family and friends of Mr Mason. Please be careful out there, folks. Still on safety, a warning had gone out this week after an official from UK Power Networks found live cables dumped in a wheelie bin. Electrical engineer Chris Slattery said the Twin Earth, which was still connected to the 240 volt mains, could have killed someone. The company says that its teams have seen an increase in the number of energised cables left in a dangerous state, whether hanging from fences or tacked onto pieces of wood. It is now warning builders, demolition workers and homeowners to call their network distributor if they want cables moved. In other news, it's been revealed that the growth of women in the electrical trade is among the slowest of all the skilled occupations. In 2006, female workers in the electrical industry made up just 1.8%. Today, it's only a little bit higher at 3.18%. In fact, the electrical trade ranks in a dismal 22nd place for gender balance. So what can be done? Well, an organisation called Stopcox is attempting to make a difference. It started as an idea to bring more women into the plumbing industry, hence the name. But now it wants to do the same for electricians and other trades. It's hosting an event next month to explore how to do this. It will also look at other issues affecting female workers on the tools. The Women Installers Together event takes place in London on Tuesday the 4th of July and is completely free to everyone. I've popped a link to the registration page in the show notes. And if you're considering taking on a female or male apprentice, Gary and Marcus have created a video to walk you through all the steps. Again, the link is in the notes. In product news, two Marshall Tuflex innovations are hitting the market this month. The first is a brilliant semi-rigid conduit which you can bend by hand. The MT SuperTube, as it's known, is a hybrid system with three layers, polyethylene inner and outer sleeves with aluminium in the middle. It's low smoke and halogen, of course, and has excellent EMI screening. Gary and Gordon have just got their mitts on it for a play around, and you can see how they got on by clicking the video in the show notes. The company is also introducing van-friendly length of its mini trunking and conduit. The 2.4 metre long profiles are designed to make it easier for contractors to get length of product into the back of a small van. The new lengths include self-fixed mini trunking, which are made from recycled PVCU materials. Also available in 2.4 metre are heavy gauge conduit in both 20 and 25 mil sizes. This range is designed for industrial and commercial applications. Now, ask most electricians what their favourite bit of kit is, and many will say it's their multifunction tester. Sparks famously swear by their chosen brand of multimeter and show intense loyalty, almost to the point of hypnosis. But we think we've found a standout one that'll tempt a few people to switch. The new TIS Eco multifunction tester is both affordable and feature packed, and it's one of the best we've seen for insulation resistance testing. I'll leave it to Gary though to delve into the auto test function and safety voltage options that he says make this tester stand out. Again, the link is in the notes.
While Gary is busy playing with the TIS Eco, Gordon's gone out and about trying to get his electric car charged. But every time he rocks up to a charging station, he discovers that it's already occupied by another electric vehicle. Cue charger rage, and no doubt language as colourful as a parakeet. What to do? Wait for hours for the owner to return, only to battle with another driver for the coveted slot? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the smart queuing system, specifically the clever queue function from Monta. To learn more about this electricery, you'll need to click the final video in the show notes. And finally, we end on a story of hope and triumph. When 35-year-old Rob Parker began his electrical apprenticeship, it was at Her Majesty's pleasure. The Mancunian was locked up in HM prison Kirkham in Lancashire for a drug-related offence, but while there, he made a decision that the conviction would not come to define him. Parker then applied himself to the task of turning around his life. He fulfilled a teenage ambition by training as an electrician, but he needed a break to get an apprenticeship. Step forward, Dave Scott, contract manager of Northwest Building Services engineering business Amion. He took him under his wing and now Parker is not only a gold card carrying electrician, but he's working as the health and safety advisor on one of the company's most high profile multi-million contracts. He's also found time to raise large amounts of sponsorship for the company's adopted charity, Brian House Children's Hospice. Scott says that Parker's past is his past. He earned that right because of his willingness to learn and develop. He's a great guy, says Scott, who made a mistake but now is back on the right path. What a heartwarming story that is. Now, just before we get to your favourite bit of the show where I reveal last week's challenge words and winners, we want to thank our premium partners. We couldn't make the news without you. First up, for all your circuit protection needs, they're like having an Italian star striker in your premiership team. It's Luden Palazzoli. And the best thing to come out of Yorkshire since stainless steel, and me, it's Doncaster Cables, the home of EV Ultra and other groundbreaking and quality cables. And one of the biggest lighting companies in the world, because their capital is always Dublin, it's Irish lighting manufacturer Robus, home of great quality and innovative lighting products. Big thanks to you all. We really appreciate your ongoing support for the news. If you think you know the words I've smuggled into this week's show, pop your guess into the comments and we'll dig out a goodie bag prize to the first to get the right answers. Last week's words were nemesis and umbrella, and the first person to get both right was friend of the show and regular commenter on our fortnightly live stream, Sean the Spark. Well done to you, Sean, and as an avid viewer of the live stream, you'll know that we don't offer next day delivery of prizes, but prefer a less optimistic target of at least 28 days. So click the link in the description below to get the ball rolling on claiming your prize. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Week. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening. Until next time, have a great week. Stay safe out there. And remember, there's no such thing as a torque calibrated arm.